I was actually, I was, uh, I was working for her uh, and I was also working a temporary uh, part-time job at the Arts Council in their drama department and I had a thought one day and I thought it's about time Boo, as we always called her, because that was her say name, she was our nickname, um, had another This Is Your Life. And as I said, I rang, it must have been someone at Thames Television, and they took it up almost immediately. I do remember Roy Hunt came into it because the job was when to give her the red book for Michael Aspel. And Roy was appearing at the time in pantomime to Croydon, and he knew Evelyn Lay very well and very fond of her. And he said, why don't you bring her to a matinee and then get her on the stage at the end and I'll introduce her to the audience. And that's what happened. And bear in mind, she was 92 and she was a bit confused by all this. Why well, have I got to go on the stage? And I said, well, darling, they want to introduce you to the world. Oh, she was there all right then. Anyway, to cut a long story short, Michael Aspel came on and gave her the red book. I think she was confused about that. And that was it. And then a car took her straight to the studio. You see, she wanted to know what was happening. And as she was rather confused anyway, um, but I did my best, that I, I it was helped tremendously going to see Roy first because she knew him and she was very fond of him and he put her at her ease. But then, of course, when we got in the car, we had to leave him uh, to go to the studio. Then there was a load of questions, you know, so I was a bit... Uh, I had to be very wary what I said to her, you know, my point of view. I was try <laughs> trying to explain to her that... A lot of her friends had arrived and, uh, you know, I think it got through eventually. I mean, once she was in the spotlight and she saw people she knew and recognised, she was fine. You know, and she looked around to see if I was there and I gave her a big wink and, um, oh no, she was fine. And, and she was pleased to her, her nephew was there and, um, you know, I mean, she was... Well, she was a pro, wasn't she? I mean, she started when she was 16 and um, she'd been on the stage for well over 70 years, so... Um, Daddy Sheridan was there, bless her heart, yes. Elizabeth Welsh, who was a big name at the time, who was a good friend of Evelyn Day's. Doris Hare, who was in, so, um, because they'd, they'd worked together in Ensa. It was a place up in Scotland, very, very far up in Scotland, and they'd entertained the troops up there during the war. The letter from the Queen Mother was read out. Larry Grayson was a great fan of hers. He adored her. And in one, he was doing a television program. I can't remember whether it was at the time or he'd just done it, and he had her as guest one night. And he was thrilled to bits. I think I suggested him coming because he was such a, well, it was a name and also he was a great fan of hers. I think it done very well because it was illustrative. Uh, even when the artists weren't there in, in person, it was illustrated different parts of her life. I mean, they showed her as a little girl and then when she first appeared on the stage, when she first started and various parts of her life. And Douglas Fairbanks was one of the people who spoke from America, you know. Um, so I think they did that very well. I, I had an idea. They'd done some work for me before the Sylvia Young School. And When I Grow Too Old to Dream is one of her Evelyn Lay's songs, famous songs. And I had the idea of being asked to have children coming on at the end. And they sang to her. And that was really the end, you know. Before, um, and it was rather nice. Mm. And Sylvia uh, Young was thrilled to have her kids, you know. On a, she was very much respected and loved. And she was one of those big stars, but she gave very little trouble, you know. She, um, she wasn't, um, what you call, very temperamental, you know. I mean, she wanted everything just right, and she knew when to make an entrance. But um, she wasn't. She went. To, she was always very popular, even with the boys and girls and the, the dancers and the stagehands. All loved her. 
Well, for me, the main memory was I was glad when it was over in a way because it was a very exhausting day trying to keep her happy um, and to know what was going on without t telling too much, you know what I mean? I mean, I was aware that it was supposed to be very secretive, but obviously with someone like that, you had to tell them something because you don't suddenly get driven to a strange place without... Um, but I was very, very relieved when it was all over, but it all went very, very well. And I remember her saying to me a few days later, that was a lovely day, wasn't it, we had reason? And I said, yeah, but I think she'd forgotten the actual day, but she remembered parts of it, you know, and she knew she would gone somewhere else and met all these people, and um, that's really what... Um, I think that's bits of it stuck in her mind, you know. I was um, always very fond of her as a, as, a, as a child and growing up as a teenager I used to go and see her when she shows and my father knew her and um, I, I always wanted to go on the stage but um, my father had died uh, by then and I, I went to drama college, uh, sorry I went to take a secretarial course and it was an absolute fairy tale because Evelyn Leigh had just opened in a show called Wedding in Paris at the London Hippodrome and got absolutely rave notices. I was actually at the first night and it was a fantastic night, one of those you very rarely forget. She got such a wonderful ovation from the audience and uh, my mother happened to be typing, it was the secretary, happened to be typing an article for her. Evelyn Lay, and when she had this wonderful, wonderful first night and wonderful rave reviews in the papers, um, she got a lot of letters. People wrote letters in those days, fan mail, and she said to my mother, I'm going to need a secretary again. And my mother said to her, my daughter's just left college, secretarial college, and she said, send your daughter to me. And very nervously I went up to the flat, I remember it was the following Sunday afternoon, I was terrified and um, she opened the door, this vision appeared and she had a pen in her hand and she said, darling, can you get me some ink? <laughs> and that was the start of my, well it was over 40 years that um, on and off that I worked for her. Uh, first of all, as her secretary, or PA as they're now known, and then towards the latter years as her companion. And I remember one of the things she said to me in the last years, you're my very best friend. And uh, I do treasure all the times I had with her. 